I thought I'd make a video, even though it has not been 24 hours since I made a video. I'm sitting here on a Wednesday morning. It is 9.31 in the morning here on it's January the 25th, 2017. And uh, my wife just left to have breakfast with her cousins. My wife is really into her family. She's always getting on me because I'm not into my family. Well, I'm into my our family, but I, I'm not close to my brothers or sisters or... But my wife is close to her brothers and she tries to stay in contact with her older sister and she tries to stay in contact with her cousins around here and where we live. But this morning uh, I wanted to talk about I've been saying in the mornings about, I try to read Christian books in the mornings and I've been kind of out of it. And I'm still, and I was trying to explain, what does that mean? Well, it's just that I can't get into anything intellectually. <clears throat> Nothing just grabs me. Some people talk about that in reading. They don't know what to read. They get to a point where, do I want to read nonfiction? Do I want to read fiction? Uh, a graphic novel, do I want to read fantasy, science fiction, uh, a biography, letters, and they just can't get into anything. They just, nothing seems to to grab their attention or interest them. And I get that way as a Christian. Sometimes I just can't get into my books. And I Years ago, I used to kind of freak out about that because I thought, I believed that Christianity, I, well, I didn't really realize it until maybe 10, 12 years ago that my Christianity had become something intellectual. It wasn't really so much spiritual, but it was all intellectual. Uh, and when I wasn't getting intellectually stimulated, I wasn't learning new things or I felt that something was wrong with me spiritually and so I would kind of freak out. Uh, but then I realized through reading St. John of the Cross, the collected works of St. John of the Cross, that there comes a time in the Christian life where you know God in the cloud of unknowing that you get to a place where you can accept just being in the presence of God and not have to have your mind, your intellect being stimulated, that you can just be in the presence of God and not having your mind just, you know, going full speed. But I, I wanted to mention that uh, in my main study up here, I'm surrounded by Christian books that I can get into uh, if my mind was wanted to be stimulated. If I wanted to get into something intellectual, I have plenty of books. I mean, for those who watch my videos know that I went to Bible college. I went to a Reformed Bible college, which is Nykaipur College here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I went to Jackson. I went to Reformed Theological Seminary in Jackson, Mississippi. And for many, many years, I've been a Christian going on 47 years, that I've collected a big Christian library. And I'm and because I'm a bookworm, I collect Christian books. And these are some of the books that I keep in my main study. Most of my most of our libraries down in the, in the lower level which is an open basement. But I do keep here in my study books like this if I wanted to have my mind stimulated or I wanted to to get into something besides Christian mysticism or something, if I didn't want to get into you know, Dutch Puritan theology or spirituality. I've been reading this, The Christian's Only Comfort in Life and Death. An Exposition to Heidelberg Catechism, Volume 1 by Theodorus, Theodorus Vandergroove. And uh, if I didn't want to get into Old Testament Biblical Theology, 
But if I did, I could read the book of Isaiah and God's kingdom, a thematic theological approach. And this is a Scottish uh, Puritan kind of theology, godly prayer, and it's answers by John Brown of Wambre. These are the things I've been keeping on my desk. Uh, this is more like uh, church history or American Christianity a study of looking at religion in America. That's why I've been reading The Money Cult by Chris Lehman. Same thing why I've been reading Refiner's Fire. It's more looking at religion in America uh, besides just looking at Christianity, looking at all the different uh, you might say false religions going on in America. So yeah, but if I wanted to read, like for example, when you read the New Testament, like this morning I was reading, uh, I thought, well maybe I'll read the Bible this morning. Uh, my wife is that way, she reads the Bible every morning, and so I got out my Bible, and I thought I'd read the Gospel of Matthew. So I got the, I got the Bible out, and I, was, I read the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, and I started falling asleep. I just couldn't get into it. But if I wanted to get into the, the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew is in the New Testament. You can see that, the New Testament. I could read, for example, the New Testament Theology, Magnifying God in Christ by Thomas R. Snyder. And I could, I could look at this, uh, like for example, the last time I looked at this book, I was on, Chapter 8, the saving work, Jesus' saving work in the Gospels. So I could read that if I wanted to in the mornings for devotions. I could pull, pull out this Thomas Snyder, uh, New Testament theology, magnifying God and Christ, and I could read this chapter. And I could read about, uh, like I said, Jesus' saving work in the Gospels if I wanted to. Or I could read another book on theology of the New Testament by right? uh, Udo Chanel. And when I last read this, I was on the chapter on anthropology. I was reading on the origin of evil in the discourse of antiquity. So if I wanted something intellectual, I could look at this. Uh, like, for example, there's a chapter here on eschatology. You could read this, es the theology of eschatology in the New Testament. You could read that if I wanted to. Or let's say I was into, I wanted to read uh, one of the, you have the Gospels, but then you have the Pauline epistles, the letters that Paul wrote. Well, then you guys could pull out the Apostle Paul, uh, his life in theology by Udu Chanel. I could read this if I wanted to. And uh, I read this several years ago, and it's really great. And also, but the one I really like about Paul and his theology is Paul, the Apostle of God's glory in Christ of Pauline theology. So if I... If I wanted something intellectual, if I wanted to get really into the Bible with my mind, I could, and I wanted to get into Pauline's epistles, or Romans, or Galatians, or, or Colossians, or Ephesians, or the pastoral epistles, or something like that, I could pull this out and I could read what Paul says on the person of Jesus Christ, or uh, I could read Suffering and Pauline Mission, so I could read that. Uh, I could also read, if I wanted to get introduction to, like, uh, the different books of the Bible. Like I said, the Gospel of Matthew, I looked at this morning. I could look at this. Theology of the New Testament, a canonical and synthetic approach. And I could read, if I wanted to, I could read uh, the section on the Gospel of Matthew by Frank Thayman. 
And maybe I wanted to get into the Old Testament. Well, I could pull out my Old Testament theology by Bruce K. K. Welke. And I could read uh, the Abrahamic Covenant, or I could read about the gift of the land in the New Testament, or uh, I could read about anything in the Old Testament. I have this Old Testament theology I could read if I wanted to with my mind, if I really wanted to get into something intellectual. Well, let's say I wanted to get into early, the beginning of the New Testament church. Well, I could pull out these three volumes by, by James D.G. Dunn. You have Jesus Remembered. This is Christianity in the Making, Volume 1. Jesus Remembered by James D.G. Dunn. And then you have uh, Volume 2, Beginning from Jerusalem. This is Volume 2 of the series Christianity in the Making by James D.G. Dunn. And then the last volume came out last year, Neither Jew Nor Greek, A Contested Identity, Christianity in the Making, Volume 3, James D.G. Dunn. See, you know, I could read these massive volumes if I wanted something for my mind. So, and I have all these around my desk in my study. Well, let's say I wanted to get into early Christian missions. How, because Jesus said, and we just was reading it in the Gospel of Matthew this morning, Jesus says after his resurrection, before he ascended into heaven and was seated on the throne, he says to his disciples, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven on earth. Go therefore to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That's called the Great Commission. Well, I could read these two volumes if I wanted to. On early Christian missions, Jesus and the Twelve. Of uh, This is volume one, early Christian missions. Jesus and the Twelve, and I could read volume two, early Christian missions, Paul and the early church. So what I'm trying to say is if I wanted something as a Christian in the morning to really have my mind stimulated, and something intellectual, these are the books that I would recommend to read. Because some people need to have something to get into in the mornings when they have devotions. Some people read devotional books, some read the Bible, some just, you know, there's all kinds of ways. Some just pray, maybe they sing the Psalms, maybe they sing an old gospel hymn. But for me, it's always been books. And books like these that I've just showed you. And so, and there's a lot to read here. <laughs> I mean, this would take you at least a couple of years to read, but it's more, I read it more reference. And, and I love the Old Testament, so I read this once in a while again, the Old Testament theology. And I love the theology of the New Testament, and I love the Apostle Paul. Uh, when it comes to spirituality in the Christian life, I don't look at Dutch Puritanism. I don't look at the English Puritans. I don't look at modern evangelical Christianity. I look at the, the Apostle Paul and what he sets forth and what it means to live in union with Christ and to walk with Christ and to be a lover of Christ. So yeah, so these are the kind of books that I would read in the mornings if I wanted if I needed some kind of intellectual stimulation. But there comes a point where you you read all this and you just need to just sit in silence in contemplative prayer and just sit before God and just thank Him. You know, like this morning I was telling my wife or last night, I'm I'm thankful for water. You know, having clean water is really a blessing. Having a nice cup of hot coffee is a blessing. Having the Word of God and being able to read and have a functioning mind is a blessing. Being able to pick a pen up with my hand that functions and I can write is a blessing. 
to to know to wake up every day up and know that there's a personal God that you can walk with and have fellowship with God is a blessing. And it's not always something that you feel. It's not something that you that you you feel like uh, emotionally, you know, something emotion. It's a life of faith. It's a faith. It's a life of of just hoping, a, a hope that is fixed on God. So these are the kind of things that go through my mind in the mornings when I'm feeling, when I'm saying I'm out of it. What do I mean when I say I'm out of it in the mornings and I, I can't get into it? So like I said, I read Last of the Andrews and his private devotions. And I pick this up and I read something and I just try to focus my mind on those eternal things that eternal kingdom that is coming soon. Uh, because the Bible says, first seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So what we are to seek is not the things of this world that are just passing away, but we're to seek those eternal things. We're to seek Christ, seek to walk with God. And those things are not always just intellectual. I, thought, I just wanted to share that. So that's what's on my mind this morning. These are the kind of books that I would read if I wanted something to read in the morning as a Christian, but, and I'll, I'll post the title of these books if you want to look them up. Uh, tell me what you read in the mornings if you're a Christian. Do you read the Bible? You know, what is your, what is your devotional life? What is your prayer life like? How do you maintain your spiritual life? Um, besides going to church and Bible studies and private devotions, do you have any other spiritual discipline? So anyway, I thought I'd share these thoughts and hoping you have a good day and rest of the week. Feel free to comment, ask questions. Until next time, bye.